Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be covering bones in Blender for absolute beginners. Now keep in mind there are some things I'm not covering here. So I'm not going to be covering like constraints and relationships between bones and all that sort of stuff. This is just the absolute basics. Getting you to understand the concept of taking an armature in Blender, adding it in and how to make it deform a piece of geometry. And we're even gonna to be touching a little bit on weight painting. So how you can influence how much the bone influences this. So this is an absolute basic one. So if you already know kind of some things about rigging, this is gonna be extremely boring for you. But if you're absolutely new and you want a video that just takes it step by step and makes it simple for an absolute beginner, this is definitely a video that is going to benefit you. So keep watching and I'll show you how to do um, rigging in a blender. So to best demonstrate this, let's go ahead and select all the default objects. We're just going to press delete and let's go shift a, let's go to our mesh options, add in a circle and let's just quickly go to our add circle options here. And let's just give it something like 12 vertices. Now we're just going to go drop that down and we're going to go into our edit mode and with all of this active, we're just going to go E to extrude and Z and extrude it up. And let's take it up about this height. So we have a nice long cylinder. Now we're going to go control R hovering over here. And we're just going to click once and then again. So two times left clicking to add in this loop here of control R. Then we're going to come here to our loop cut options. And let's just go something like 15. And now we have some nice little, um, to, a bit of topology here that we can bend around. If you want to, you can just go ahead, shift, alt, left click to select the edges here. Or just go F just to fill them and then go control B, just create a bevel. And you can grab the bottom here as well and go F and then go control B, just create a bit of a bevel. So what we have here is just a simple object to demonstrate here. So I'm going to tab back out. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go shade smooth. So what we want to do here is we want to add in some basic bones, parent this mesh to those bones and then deform the mesh by moving those bones. This is an absolute beginner's um, tutorial. So we're just really focusing on just the very basics. So what we're going to do, we're going to go shift A and this time we're going to go to this option here called armature. Now there's all these bunch of options I have because I've enabled some different add-ons in Blender, but the one we're focusing on is just a single bone. So you can create your own system here. Now what you have here is just a single armature that's added in and kind of look at this armature as a package, right? Currently, if you go Z and you go wireframe, you just have this one single bone here. But if you go into edit mode of that bone selected, inside of here in this, you can kind of create like a whole system or network of bones, right? So for example, this is a bone in here. So let's just grab this top little nub. Let's go G and go Z to move it up. You can also grab the nub down here and go G and move that around. Or you can just left click on this whole bone and go G to move that around. You can also rotate. So anything you can kind of do with mesh, you can do this. You can even grab a nub at the top here. And just like you can go in edit mode, you can go E to extrude that as well. So I'm just going to undo that for now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to grab the tip of this bone and just bring it up a little bit. And then we're going to go E to extrude and Z. We're going to extrude up on the Z to about here. And then we're going to go do it again. And let's go again. And then one more time, we're just going to extrude up like so. So now we have some bones. We need to almost think about this like the vertebrae inside of an animal. Um, the less amount of bones you had, if we only had like, um, I'll quickly demonstrate, if we only had like two bones in here like this, um, we'll only be able to have a point here where it can deform over here because this bone can rotate and this bone can rotate at this point, but there's no in-betweens. Now, there are um, some bone options which we're not going to get into today. And um, these are called... Um, bendy bones. So bendy bones are different and I'll quickly just overview this because we can add in um, bendiness to an individual bone. So even though we'd only have two bones, it makes it possible for this to be more bendy than it can actually be. But for today, we won't get really into that too much. We're just going to keep it really simple with the default octahedral bones in Blender. Okay, so I'm just going to delete these. Just trying to get some basic concepts across. So now that we have these bones here, Let's quickly go over here to our pose mode. Now the pose mode is a bit different because as we are able to go into edit mode and actually create bones and extrude them, distribute them, um, the pose mode here gives us the ability to pose those bones. Now what's unique about the pose mode is if you go into pose mode and you would actually move one of these bones, unlike in your edit mode over here, if you select that bone, you can, in this case, I rotated it so I can go Alt R to reverse that rotation and set it back, setting back to transforms, right? So pose mode is where we would come into pose. I just want to make sure we understand the difference here between edit mode and pose mode. 
Um, inside of pose mode as well is where we can add some transforms. Um, but don't worry about that too much right now. For now, just keep in mind that if you want to move this whole system of bones, we can grab the very bottom bone and then go G to move it. Now the reason we can just grab one of these bones up here and press G to move it is because there's a hierarchy. And a hierarchy works like this. So it was just the first bone we had in our scene in edit mode. And we started extruding from that bone. And where we're extruding from, that creates a hierarchy by default because this bone that we extruded from this bone is connected to it. And the bone we extruded from that was connected to this and so on and so forth. So this is a hierarchy. And in Blender, you can change these hierarchies. But we won't get into that right now. Let's just get to what we really want to look at here. And that's how to deform the cylinders. So let's go back into object mode and let's grab this cylinder. And what we're gonna do, you, if you wanna parent something into uh, bones in Blender, you always have to grab the mesh first. And then holding in shift, you select your bone system. Then you're gonna go control P and that brings up your parenting options. Now control P we use for all other sorts of parenting in Blender, but now when you do it in this situation, you're gonna see some more options and that has to do with armature to form. So these ones here. So we're gonna go with automatic weights and now, if we grab the cylinder, we go over to our modifiers, we can see Blender is automatically added in the armature modifier, and it's already given us that um, object is the armature here that's selected, okay? So now what we can do, we can grab this bone set and we're gonna go into pose mode. And now we have the ability to go in here and rotate these bones. And you can see here, we're deforming. Now the reason it looks kind of bad like this it's because Blender has done its best job here to try and do them by default, but we can do it a bit better. So I'm just gonna press A to select everything, go Alt-G, Alt-R, Alt-S, just to reset any transforms. And let's go into pose mode. And with this bone structure selected, we're just gonna hold in Shift and select our mesh. Then we're gonna to go to object, and now we're gonna see we have a weight paint option. And now what we can do is we can go Z, we can go to wireframe, if that doesn't work, let's just come over here and toggle on our X-ray so we can see our bones. And now if you hold in control or command, you can left click on a bone and you can see its weight properties. So in this case here, you can see we currently have the draw enabled. So let's just use the draw and let's just draw onto here. And anything that is red or warmer in value is gonna have more influence. So if this bone here, everything that's warmer, it's gonna be more influenced by this bone. So in this case, we wanna probably go like this and just paint up to where that bone kind of ends over there. But all this influence here, we wanna get rid of it. So what do we do? We go over here to the brush option, we go to subtract, and now we can paint away. So the, the less warm the values are, closer to this blue over here, the less influence we're gonna have. So now I'm painting all of this away, as you can see over here, right? And what we can do, you can hold a control and select the next bone. And we can do the exact same thing. We can go grab the add brush, and let's just paint around here, just the mesh we want influenced like that. And let's go ahead and paint away over here, like so, okay? And then control click on the next bone. And this is a really good, uh, I know this is really basic and might be a bit boring for some people, but keep in mind that this is just a very good way if you're absolutely new to kind of learn how to do this, okay? Because there are gonna be times where the Blender's default weighting system isn't gonna work that good you need to be able to come in here and kind of manually set things up. So that's why I'm showing you this very basic example, just as a good starting point for you guys to learn how to do this. So just real quick, finishing this off like that. And let's just grab this guy at the top holding control and just paint that nice and warm. There we go. And just quickly subtract these bottom bits like that. Okay, so now let's go back into our object mode, select our armature and let's go into pose mode. And now let's give it a shot, okay? We can come here and grab it. Now you can see that's deforming a lot more like what we want. There's still a little bit of influence here. I obviously rushed that, but you guys kind of get the idea here. Now we have a cool way of controlling this and that's really awesome. So another thing we can keep in mind, let's just say for example, we grab this top bone and rotate it and this one here, right? Let's go back into object mode. At the moment, this is looking a little bit rough. So we can actually come here to our modifiers. We can give it a subdivision surface modifier on top of the armature. Now it is possible to put the subdivision surface modifier first, but that's not good practice. It's always good to put it after the armature here. And now you can see it is smoothed it out quite a bit. 
And this is kind of like the really, in a nutshell, really basic concept of adding bones in Blender and manipulating a piece of mesh using that bone. Um, we're not gonna even get into constraints and all these other things here, because there's, there's so much more that could be said about bones in Blender and how they work and how you can set up hierarchies and stuff. But this is just getting the fundamentals across. And just one more thing, if you wanna be able to see through without having wireframe or x-ray, you can just go over here with your armature selected and go to your bones. Go to viewport display and I think you can go, or maybe you have to go here to your object data properties. And then you have to go to in front under the viewport display. And then you will always see through no matter where it is located. So that is the basics of bones for absolute beginners in Blender. And like I said, there's a lot more you can learn. And if this has kind of given you a basic idea, you can check out some of my other tutorials that cover this in a much more advanced kind of way. I'll see you guys next time.